Hello, everyone, and welcome. I am so pleased. Today, I have Jenny from Hillsdale College. She is with me to talk all about college admissions. I'm going to let Jenny do a little introduction to herself because she has ties to homeschool, which I think is great. Jenny, welcome. Why don't you introduce yourself? Wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really pleased to be able to speak to you today and hopefully offer a little insight um, into college admissions, specifically Hillsdale. Um, but hopefully you can find some of this information really helpful um, in whatever college path you're, you're going along. Uh, my name is Jenny Pridgen. I, I was homeschooled K through 12, so a lifer, right, as they say. Um, and I loved it. It was so great to grow up with my family. Um, my mom did a really nice job. We used a mixture of curriculums. I'm the oldest of five, and so it got better and better, I think, as it got down to my baby brother. Uh, but I was happy to be the guinea pig, and I ended up attending Hillsdale. Um, from 2004 to 2008. So I had not had much experience in the classroom. I did a co-op, a science co-op and kind of through middle school. And then when my family moved, we couldn't participate in that anymore, but I did do a little bit of dual enrolling, uh, particularly for Spanish classes. So I had that experience coming in. Um, and then I, uh, my time at Hillsdale, I was really involved in lots of things, but decided to also to major in political science with a minor in English. Um, and then after graduating, I wasn't exactly sure what to do, um, but one of my good friends who I admired a lot was in this role. And she said, oh, Jenny, you would really like admissions. So I thought, oh man, if Lauren tells me I'd like admissions, I have to try. Uh, so I applied and I was thankfully offered a position. I recruited the middle 12 states for a long time, which if you wanna know which the middle 12 are, um, when we only had five counselors on staff. Um, and then in 2012, I moved to Denver, Colorado and recruited the West for four years, which was really excellent. Um, but eventually I wanted to get back to near my family um, and Hillsdale College offered me a position still within the admissions office, but now I'm a director of field recruitment. So I oversee now our 10 admissions counselors who recruit, recruit the country. Uh, so I, I do that as well as doing a bunch of other things, but then I also work with the dual enrolled students in Hillsdale County because Hillsdale College does offer that option. So I work with those students particularly. Very good. Let's start with talking a little bit about dual enrollment in general okay. um, and what that means. I know we talked a little bit prior to this and Hillsdale does offer dual enrollment, but yeah. not online. Yes, unfortunately. We're hoping to eventually, but there's no timeline on it. So keep checking our website if that's something that you're interested in. But yeah, dual enrolling is a really neat opportunity, especially I think for homeschoolers. Um, because it gives you a chance to take, you know, maybe science with a lab when if you live in a, a, in a place where you might not have the opportunity for that. I know for me in Spanish, you know, my mom doesn't know Spanish and I wanted to learn Spanish. So I think having that in-person instruction can be really helpful. Uh, so it's an um, opportunity to fulfill high school requirements while simultaneously getting college credit. Now, sometimes that college credit will transfer one-to-one -one with other colleges. And sometimes it counts as elective credit toward graduation. Other times it doesn't count at all, but it does prepare you re really well for the next step. So like we don't take college algebra, um, but you definitely want to take college algebra before you take college calculus. So still take it, even if it might not transfer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So when you are going through the, and when a student is going through the admission process there at Hillsdale College, what are you looking for in a teen um, that might stand out? What are the top things you look for? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, our president of our college uh, often says we're looking for students uh, who are willing and able. So there's kind of this dual, dual purpose, right, in the admissions office and what we want. We want students who can do the work academically. Uh, Hillsdale is a rigorous place. We have you read a lot of hard things. We demand a lot of you. I think in a good way, in a healthy way, but still it's a lot. And if that's not what you're looking for in a college, it's good to know on the front end uh, that we're gonna be having you do a lot of homework. Um, I think it's good homework, but it's homework nonetheless. So uh, we really wanna know that you can do that work. So have the horsepower, as we say. And we measure that by a lot of things. A test score maybe, GPA, the rigor of your coursework, which dual enrolling can really help bolster that. Um, we're looking at your, at your writing. What do your teachers say about you, about you know, the way that you go about learning in the classroom? Um, we also highly recommend admissions and interview. So in that conversation, we can tell 
oh, this person seems to really enjoy learning and like things that they're maybe not going to major in, but they're still going to have to take in our core curriculum. Uh, so that that ability is really important, kind of the first hurdle um, in our admissions process. But as I like to say, you know, once you get over that hurdle, everything else becomes really important. So if we've asked that answer that question, well, can the student do this work here? And if the answer is yes, then everything else in their application um, becomes important too. So their resume, um, the things that their teachers say about them as far as their personality and character are concerned. Same thing with the interview. Um, so will you get involved on campus? Do you seem like a nice person? Uh, do you like to talk about ideas or do those things sort of shut you down? We want students who are gonna be willing to participate in the community. Maybe your strength is more academic. Maybe you're good at academics, but your strength is serving the community or you know, getting really involved in sports. And we love students who have these different strengths. We don't want everyone here to look the same, but you do have to have a certain level of kind of ability uh, to be successful. So I would say it's those two, those two things together. Absolutely. You kind of touched on the traits, like yeah. what traits would you say that you look for in a teen? And something you said really sparked uh, my thoughts because one of our things is you'll, your student will love or your I forget what you're, you'll love to teach, your student will love to learn and mm -hmm. you'll love to teach guaranteed. Wow. And so we do want to instill that lifelong love of learning. That's what we hope for with people who are using sunlight. So mm -hmm. talk to me a little bit about those traits. I really enjoyed that one because that's one that we hold um, high value in. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I think we're looking for that and, and we express it in some different ways, you know, so sometimes we express it as humility right? Because if you come into a place and you think, oh, I know it all, then, then what are you here for, you know? And if you're not willing to maybe go the extra mile or, I mean, just because you're success, successful, that doesn't mean that you can't be better. And so going to the writing center, even when your writing is okay, you know, talking to your professors, even if you kind of understand things, because you're here, you only have four years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after this, you have to focus on other things, not that you can't keep learning, but these are the four years you have to focus on it. And so what are you going to do with these four years? So I think this like, you know, humility slash love to learning, this curiosity, this, this passion and interest to see how things connect. I think those are traits we really like to see. And they come out in different ways, right? It's not always exactly the same thing for each student, but a sense of humility is, is really important. But then you also need, you know, a little bit of confidence. You have to have an opinion. Otherwise, your mind can't be changed. And not that we want to change your mind necessarily, but right, there has to be the option. You have to think something in order to be shifted one way or another or, or to kind of come into your, into your own and to, you know, make your foundation in something. So you have to have enough confidence to talk in class. You have to have a little bit of confidence so that you can say something and maybe be wrong and it won't destroy you for a week, you know? And so I realized my senior year, like, oh, I was trying to put up this facade of having it together. And that's not the point, you know, and I learned so much more my senior year because I, you know, said, Hey, I think it's this. And then I realized it wasn't, but that was okay. I put forth this thing. And then I was able to sort of take the new answer and shift my thinking. And it, it was really helpful. So I think a mixture of humility, confidence, and then um, our honor code is really important at Hillsdale. So a trait of like this, this deep kindness where we respect each other especially people who disagree with us. Um, we think it's really important that you be able to say what you think and why you think it. And for someone to be able to say, oh, that's so interesting. Tell me more about that. And if we're just always shutting each other down or assuming things about people, then that's really challenging. So I think a deep respect for people and their ideas is kind of the third thing that we look for. I love that. It's That's a great, those are great traits. And I think um, especially for sunlight, I know a lot of, a lot of kids, you know, we encourage those conversations. We, mm -hmm. we really do, um, encourage that love of learning and we hope that everyone is very open-minded and opinionated at the same time, yes. which is a very fun, you know, so fun. way to be. So, um, let's talk a little about, about homeschool teens specifically. Mm -hmm. What traits do you think they bring to the college experience? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And so maybe I'm just thinking that I brought all this great stuff to Hillsdale, which I don't mean that, but um, I do think homeschoolers 
bring a lot of really good things to campus. Um, and this last fall, we had 18% of our incoming freshmen were, uh, were homeschooled. Um, that's what you know the system they graduated from. It's, it's not to say that they were K through 12, but normally it's about 13%. So it's, it's pretty significant. And I would say particularly the things that I've been really impressed by would be um, an ability to be sort of like self-managed, you know, order your time in, in a way that's productive. I know my mom gave me my assignments by month. And so I could look ahead that month and I could work hard. The goal was to go be able to work with my dad, who's a general contractor. But um, this goal was like, you know, okay, this thing is set out and I can figure out how, how to get there and accomplish all these things. And if I work harder, then things are easier. And if I work ahead, then, you know, the end is lighter. And you know, college is a lot more like that than maybe like a public school where you have more day-to-day -day things. Not that you don't in homeschooling, but um, I think, you know, when you get your course syllabus at the beginning of a semester in college, sometimes it's, you know, two tests and two papers and your final. So that's all you're graded on sometimes. Sometimes it's participation, sometimes you have quizzes for sure, but like generally there are big things that are kind of, you know, just dispersed throughout the semester, not, not lots of things that can all build up. So you, you have to start your paper sooner. You, you can't wait till the last minute. You have to study for your test and be engaged in things before you're being tested on them. And so uh, I think this ability to sort of learn to manage your time, to work ahead, to be self-motivated, those are all really good things. Um, and I also think homeschooling gives some flexibility as far as getting involved in work and volunteerism and things like that. And I think that ability to balance all those things when they're not pushed into a certain amount of time, you have to decide when you can do things and when you can't. Um, and you hopefully value getting involved in those di different ways. We like students who are well-rounded like that and are, have this ability to be you know, deeply involved in both academic and outside things. That's great, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about scholarships and how teens specifically can get noticed yes. for scholarships at Hillsdale. Oh, good question. So particularly at Hillsdale, I would say um, expressing your interest as a junior is really helpful because uh, not necessarily your interest in scholarships, though you can certainly talk about that, but uh, about a third of our applications are stealth applications, which means the way that we learn about them is by them applying. We had no idea who they were before they applied. And a lot of people now can do a ton of research online and your first in, you know, level of interest is to apply to a college. They don't know who you are until you submit your application, which is nice and that you don't get that much mail from them. But colleges are attempting to tell their story starting the, like kind of the spring of your junior year, the end of your junior year through when you apply in late fall, they, they assume. So if you start expressing interest in colleges in January and February, maybe even March of your junior year, and then colleges have these nine months to give you all the things they think you need to know, not just about the college itself, but also about scholarship opportunities. So um, I would say expressing interest sooner rather than later so that we know who you are, um, you know, maybe doing it, an admissions interview early in the fall, September, October, we travel a lot and we do regional interviews so you don't have to come to campus necessarily. Um, so getting to know your admissions counselor so that they can fight for you, I think is really good. A place like Hillsdale is so small and demonstrated interest means a lot. And so it, we want to know that you want to be here. And if we don't hear about you until you apply, we don't really know if you want to be here because we've never talked to you before. Now that doesn't mean we want to get a text at midnight every week, right? Like <laughs> slow down just a little bit, but every couple of months sending us a really great email. Hey, Jenny, I'm so interested. You know, can you tell me more about this or more about that? Remember that you can also Google things. So don't ask us lots of questions that you could also Google, but we do wanna to get to know you. And so, you know, expressing interest at reasonable intervals, I think is really helpful. And then definitely applying earlier rather than later. Um, this year, our applications are up 55%, which means that it's just astounding. And, you know, the last month and a half, we've been saying no to students that in years past, there would have been obvious admissions. So it's just hard because we don't wanna grow which is a strange thing for a school, but we just want to stay the same size because we think small classes are really important. So um, because of that, we can't admit as many students as we want to, which means you should apply early, not necessarily early decision, um, which commits you to Hillsdale, 
but just early in the process. So like November, December, that also puts you in priority consideration for all scholarships. Also, if you're interested in special scholarships like, um, you know, athletics or music or art or theater, it's good to be on their radar sooner rather than later too, though most of their deadlines are like March 1st. Still, if they can know about you more in December, they can plan like, oh, I hope I really get George, you know, so I got to save this for him. Not necessarily, but like in your mind, you almost think that. And so um, that's a really good thing uh, to be on top of. And then lastly, just want to say a quick note about the way that we do financial aid and that we don't take any federal or state funding at all. So the FAFSA doesn't work at Hillsdale. Um, and so you have to apply using our need-based aid form, which I can tell you about if you want to call me, but uh, just so that you know. So I think if you're interested in scholarship, being on top of things, putting together a resume that's really comprehensive. I know at Hillsdale, we really like to know lots of things, not just, uh, you know, uh, really formal things. And I know homeschoolers can get involved in a lot of informal things. So maybe you started a book club, maybe you serve in a really particular way. Um, and if it's not something that we're used to seeing, you should explain it to us not a page and a half, right? But like a few well-chosen sentences that capture kind of what you're trying to do in this particular involvement is really helpful, right? We know what a Boy Scout does, so you don't need to describe that. But like, you know, if you started something that you think, oh, I wonder what, if they'll know what this is, please tell us. Um, also for homeschoolers, we really like to see a, a high school reading list if that's something you like to do. So if you really spend a lot of time reading, we wanna know about it and give us a list. You, it doesn't have to be exhaustive but um, that's a really good way to round out so that we understand how you spend your time. So at Sunlight, you could use your instructor's guides to yes. pull the list from, because all of the reading your student will have done is in your instructor's guides. And it's a lot at Sunlight. <laughs> yeah, um, we're it. literature based, so it's, yeah. it's a lot. Um, the other thing is I went to a small university and I absolutely loved the small class size. I loved it. I think I would have gotten lost in a large mm -hmm. university. So I do appreciate that you guys are keeping it small. And I think that's important too. If you really want that, it's, the, it's out there for you to find at, at universities. And the last thing I wanted to say on what you said is how do they set up a admissions interview? Like what is oh, that's a great that process? Yes. So a couple of options now because of COVID things are strange, but we are hosting students on campus. And so if you come to visit campus, um, you'll automatically be signed up for an admissions interview. So just don't skip out on it, right? Just be like, oh yes, I'm there. You know, I'll, I'll make that happen. Also, if you're on our mailing list, another reason to join as a junior would be that as we confirm locations for our fall travel season, so all my counselors travel you know, end of August through September and October, most of them have five or six or seven states. So you don't want to miss it when they're near you. Um, it's on our website, but also if you're on our, on our mailing list, then we'll tell you when we're coming. We'll send you a postcard. We'll send you an email. We'll invite you to participate in this thing that you can sign up for. And then, you know, if you're kind of right outside the radius, I know some students will drive two or three hours because that's so much closer than coming all the way up to Hillsdale. You know, if you live in Texas, worth it to drive to Houston as opposed to Hillsdale, Michigan, if you can't yes. get to campus until later. So Absolutely. Um, so let, lastly, let's talk about what some families can do to help prepare their student for college in general. What do you, what advice do you have? That's a really good question. So I think um, preparation and academic ability is important. And so you don't want to you know, taking math, a harder level of math is really good. Um, you know, taking three solid years of science, even though it might be hard to figure out how to make that work, I think is really good. At least two years of a consecutive foreign language, really helpful, makes you competitive. Um, English and history, right, should be pretty consistent throughout the four years. So, you know, there are a lot of curricular things that you can do that will may mean that your student is prepared for the sorts of things that they'll be called upon to, to do at Hillsdale. Um, I also think, I think dual enrolling and AP credits and, and IB credits, things like that, CLEP is good. Um, even if those classes don't necessarily count for a Hillsdale credit that helps you graduate sooner. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I don't wanna do it unless it means something in college, but maybe it'll mean something really meaningful in high school where it makes students really comfortable um, you know, jumping into a, a, a Spanish class that they've already, you know, started to be familiar with. Maybe, 
you know, so even if, even if it doesn't come out in quite the way that you're hoping, I think this additional rigor, this outside testing, even if they're not as accurate as you want them to be, I think it's really good to get students, you know, really uh, used to being called upon to do things that are different from what they've been called upon to do up until then, because that's going to happen a lot. They might have a professor they don't agree with. They might have a classmate who's annoying, right? And so all these things where you just have to be accustomed to it. And I think it's helpful to get your feet wet before you jump into Hillsdale. Um, so I think, you know, at Hillsdale specifically, our core curriculum is really extensive and it's the thing we built our whole college on, like the education that we offer. We think these classes are essential to that foundation. And so if you are like, hey, I want to get out of all those classes, if that's where you're at, then you shouldn't come to Hillsdale, you know, but I do think these college courses and these AP courses they, they can give you some flexibility by coming in as elective credit. Some will get, get you out of some core, um, but I think it, what it really does is gets you used to a rigor, an expectation, sometimes like pushing through frustration um, in all really helpful ways that will prepare you for Hillsdale. Absolutely. And lastly, yeah. to learn more about Hillsdale, where do they go? Oh, good question. So I would say hillsdale.edu is a really helpful re resource. Also, um, Facebook and Instagram are really active uh, for Hillsdale. So I think if you're a prospective student, I actually would really recommend Instagram. We just profiled one of our uh, juniors, uh, John Biscaro, and he like, kind of walked through a day of a Hillsdale student and things like that. So I think you can get a really like engaging picture of Hillsdale that way. And also, if you want to talk to your admissions counselor, um, you can go online, you can type in your a bit, bit of your address because we assign counselors by where you live, and you can see who your counselor is and reach out to them and ask questions. So we'd love to get to know you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jenny. It's been very informative. And um, I hope our audience, I know our audience will love this as well. So thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me.